The local media dubbed Stanley Ho the king of gambling, and he was synonymous with Macau's rise to global prominence. In 1961, he won the jackpot, a monopoly to run casinos in what was then a Portuguese overseas territory. Ho held that winning hand for four decades, while helping transform the territory from a colonial backwater to a world-famous money machine. He reaped the benefits as China's fast-expanding economy churned out a seemingly inexhaustible line of high rollers. When Macau returned to Chinese rule in 1999, it was the only place in the country where gambling was legal. And Stanley Ho's casinos generated 75% of the territory's tax revenue year after year. Ho also helped visitors get to Macau and stay there. He invested heavily in infrastructure, plowing money into ferry and helicopter services, an airport, hotels and restaurants. Ho's business empire still dominates the city. Stanley Ho eventually lost his gaming monopoly, and since 2004, his casinos have had to jostle for position against rivals like Sands, Wynn and Galaxy. With 17 children from four women he considered wives, Stanley Ho's family life was as complex as his business empire. Despite his nickname, Ho claimed he never gambled. Instead, he made time to swim, play tennis and ballroom dance well into his 80s. But in 2009, just a year after carrying the Olympic torch at the Beijing Games, he was hospitalized for months and was rarely seen in public again. More control over his business empire was handed to family, including Pansy, a daughter from his second wife, and Angela Leong, the woman considered his fourth wife. His legacy also continues through his son, Lawrence, who has his own gaming operations. Stanley Ho and Macau shared more than half a century of intertwined fortunes. But even as the city now looks at a future beyond casinos, he will always be linked to the rise of the world's biggest gambling hub.